This is From the Front Lines. Thank you so much for being with me. I'm Pastor Larry, and today is Friday, May the 29th, 2020. This is where we learn about the battle, and learn a little bit more about what's going on right in front of us, and also looking behind the scenes. You know, there's an Illinois judge, his uh, name is Judge Michael McHaney. Uh, he's pointed out the gross inconsistencies of Illinois Governor Pritzker's orders, and listen to what the governor has allowed for allowing marijuana dispensaries and Walmarts to operate but not small businesses and religious institutions. They can't operate. The judge said this. He said that selling pot is essential, but selling goods and services at a family-owned business is not. And he pointed out how ridiculous Governor Pritzker and many other governors like him, how they're really being silly. The judge said pot wasn't even legal in the state until five months ago. In those five months, it has become essential but a family-owned business in existence for five generations is not, close quotes. The judge said four people can drive to a golf course and not get COVID, but if they play a foursome, they will. If I go to Walmart, I won't get COVID, but if I go to church, I will. Murderers are released from custody while small business owners are threatened with arrest if they attempt to feed their families. Friends, have you ever seen more nonsense than what we're having in our country right now, especially with uh, judges who uh, are, or mayors and, and governors who are in the blue states? Judge McElhaney's observations are inescapable. Governor Pritzker makes laws for other people, but not for himself or his family. The governor allowed his own family members to travel to Florida and Wisconsin while demanding Illinois residents to stay put to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. I like uh, Judge McHaney. He said this, he said, when laws do not apply to those who make them, people are not being governed, they're being ruled. Amen, Judge. Just speak the truth, you're right on. Make no mistake about it. These executive orders are not laws. They are royal decrees. They are so un-American, so wrong. Illinois citizens are not being governed, they're being ruled. The last time I checked, the judge said, Illinois citizens are also Americans, and Americans don't get ruled. Amen. Now, you know, uh, Judge McHaney in uh, Illinois, he noticed something that we've all noticed. Doctors and experts say different things weekly. You know, they pass all these, uh, give all these ideas that lead to these draconian laws and lockdowns, and they don't even agree. The judge said this, the only thing experts will agree on is that all models are wrong, and some are a little bit useful. The Centers for Disease Control now says the virus is not easily spread on surfaces. So are, is it spread on surfaces or isn't it spread on surfaces? Something that is very encouraging to me, friends, is the way Americans are rising in force en masse to combat these ridiculous laws and restrictions that are being put on Americans in America. I think we're seeing a slow death of civil liberties in the name of public safety. See, when you say public safety, that kind of, you know, allows you to do just about any stupid, ridiculous, unconstitutional thing, and that's exactly what's happening, and too many of us are not realizing that fact. The idea of any public official saying that churches and houses of worship are not essential is something that a left-wing progressive who is an atheist would say. And I'm not surprised. I would expect that an atheist would say that houses of worship are not essential. It's like a milk cow saying eating hamburger is not an essential to your diet. Of course, cows don't eat meat. And atheists don't think that church is essential. So why do we have to listen to them? By the way, we do have a constitution. And the constitution was not put together by atheists. So why does someone like Minnesota Governor Waltz determine whether or not churches are open? I'm glad we have a constitution. And we're not listening to these blue state liberal left-wing governors and mayors. I can't believe they have multiplied uh, you know, that's the real coronavirus pandemic, the governors and the mayors who are Democrats. That's the danger. 
They'd love to kill this lovely, wonderful, beautiful country of ours that so many men and women in many wars have battled to keep free and open so you and I can worship the way we see fit. And worship, you know, freedom of religion, not only for Christians, it's for Muslims, it's for Hindus, and even atheists have freedom. But don't tell me that I can't go to church, or I can't preach, or I can't sing, or I can't preach on the gospel of Jesus Christ and say those lawyers, those judges, those mayors are atheists, and we don't want to listen to them. That's my religious liberty. So I'm really glad, however, that we have a president who respects God and who honors the Constitution. The president said this, some governors have deemed the liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. So I'm correcting this injustice and calling houses of worship essential. Now, friends, let's look at a, a clip from uh, this historic moment when President Trump made this wonderful, and it's a true statement, that houses of worship are essential. Past what now seems like a long period of time. Today, I'm identifying houses of worship, churches, synagogue, and mosques as essential places that provide essential services. Some governors have deemed liquor stores and abortion clinics as essential, but have left out churches and other houses of worship. It's not right. So I'm correcting this injustice and calling houses of worship essential. I call upon governors to allow our churches and places of worship to open right now. If there's any question, they're going to have to call me, but they're not going to be successful in that call. These are places that hold our society together and keep our people united. The people are demanding to go to church and synagogue, go to their mosque, Many millions of Americans embrace worship as an essential part of life. The ministers, pastors, rabbis, imams, and other faith leaders will make sure that their congregations are safe as they gather and pray. I know them well. They love their congregations. They love their people. They don't want anything bad to happen to them or to anybody else. The governors need to do the right thing and allow these very important essential places of faith to open right now for this weekend. If they don't do it, I will override the governors. In America, we need more prayer, not less. Thank you very much. Thank you. Reverend Samuel Rodriguez, who's the president of the National Hispanic Christian Leadership Conference with more than 45,000 member churches, said, quote, I hope the governors do as the president asked and understand that people of faith do not meet at churches and other religious centers to simply fill a building. We do so because it's an integral part of what our faith teaches about how we should live, close quotes. You know, Judge Andrew Napolitano was right. He said this. He said, the government in America, state or federal, has no authority to determine what goods, services, and venues are essential. What is essential to the laborer or student or housewife may not be essential to the former Goldman Sachs partner who was elected governor of New Jersey and who decreed last week, quote, it shall be the duty of every person or entity in this state to cooperate fully with my orders, close quote. And Judge Napolitano was right. Judge Napolitano said New York City Mayor de Blasio is totally off base. I agree with Judge Napolitano. The mayor of New York City, listen to this. This is a fact, and this is shocking. I remember when it first happened. The mayor of New York City threatened to permanently close businesses and houses of worship that flaunt his guidelines. I guess Mr. de Blasio forgot that this is America. It's not communist China. Why is he acting like that kind of a person? I'm fully agreeable, of course, to reasonable precautions and even restrictions. However, the idea that elected officials in America would state that churches and other houses of worship are not essential is deeply troubling to me. And I hope it gives you 
stomach pain because this is serious stuff. This has a 1984 Orwellian flavor. To say that houses of worship cannot hold services at a time when parishioners and church members are grappling and grappling with the crisis is so manifestly wrong. Look at the weird things that are happening in our country. Look at that awful situation with that awful police officer uh, in the, the city of, of Minneapolis. We, we've got major problems. People like that need to worship. They need to be able to go and hear people singing and praising the Lord and hear the word of God. These lost souls don't have any idea about worship or what it is all about. And then the families in America, thousands and thousands and thousands of families may be grieving the loss of loved ones from the virus or struggling with job losses, but they're unable to seek counsel, fellowship, or comfort in their place of worship. What a silly idea that, <laughs> that houses of worship are not essential. The government has no right to restrict uh, churches and meetings uh, on some activities, which to some Americans are so very important. And the governor has, the government has no right to rewrite the Constitution. Amen on that. You see, those who are seeking to change what God has given to us, they're, they're treading on dangerous territory. They will have to answer to God for their arrogance and for their folly. Now, there is one church on planet Earth that has an amazing ministry. It is the fastest growing church on planet Earth. It grew from 25 members to 130,000 in just 10 years. Now, it has eight campuses and 330,000 members. The pastor is Sadish Kumar. He's a young man who preaches several hour-long, hell-smashing, Christ-exalting sermons on Sunday. And then he preaches for about an hour to a staff of 100. And uh, like I say, his name is Sadish Kumar. He is the pastor of uh, Calvary Temple in Hyderabad, India. They have recently provided more than 3 billion meals. Now here's a video that shows how it's done. May God bless them. This video will thrill your heart. Dr. Satish Kumar has always been at the forefront of serving the society and especially at such times of crisis due to the coronavirus lockdown. Thousands of poor families are struggling to meet both ends, driven by the love of Christ and inspired by his words. Whatever you do for one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you did it for me. As the love of Christ compelled Dr. Satish Kumar, he came forward to donate 700 tons of food and medicines to the poor and needy. In this video, you can see Dr. Satish Kumar sharing with the media and the national press how Calvary Temple responded to his call and worked tirelessly to a massive 700 tons of food. The essential groceries are packed in carton boxes to be distributed. Each kid allows a family of four to have three square meals each day for the entire month. Thirty thousand families have been reached so far. That counts to 2.5 million meals served and still counting. Under Dr. Satish Kumar's visionary leadership, Calvary Temple started many unique programs like free medical consulting and treatment for thousands of people, subsidized medicines, feeding over 200,000 people every month, providing food, clothes and blankets to the homeless, aiding 7,000 poor children to go to school, financial support to widows, old age homes for abandoned parents, and many other humanitarian services for many years now. All these activities are done without any foreign funds, but only through the sacrificial giving of the Calvary Temple members. 
a temple that always strived to show the world the love of Christ in word and in deeds. Thank you, friends, for being with us uh, on From the Front Lines. We're in a battle, but our cause is just, and we have Almighty God who is on our side. If you're on His side, you are a winner. So have faith, be filled with the Spirit, have a wonderful weekend, and Lord willing, I will see you next week.